Hi, I'm Lena with Studio R12. Thanks for joining me today for a creative moment. I'm going to be showing you how to use our product, the stencil, to create your perfect DIY project. I'll show you how to use the right kind of brushes and the right amount of paint so that you don't have bleeding underneath and that way you can create something great every time. If you stay tuned to the end of the video, I'll also be sharing with you some pro tips like how to layer your stencils, distressing, ombre, drop shadow, and antiquing. So with this board and this stencil, since they're different sizes, one of the things you can do to be sure they line up right is use a T-square. You're just going to lay your stencil and then you're going to use the T-square on the edge of the board to line it up and make sure it's straight and in the middle. Once you get that taken care of, you're going to go for your tape. All you're going to need to do if your stencil is larger than your board is take two little pieces of tape here and you stick it over your lettering and just rub it down really good with your finger a couple of times. That way it'll really stick. And that should keep it from moving around on you when you're working. Just like that, okay? The next thing you're gonna need, and this is really important, is a dome brush. Lots of people choose flat brushes when they're stenciling, but the important step here is the dome to our brush, okay? So the dome keeps your stencil or keeps your brush from pushing paint underneath your stencil, which will prevent bleeding. It's one of the most important steps when you're looking to have a crisp, clean stencil. So what I like to do is get a paper towel, take my brush, and I just barely dip into my paint. So you're going to get just a little bit on there, okay? And then the next step I like to do is take my brush and run it off that way. And that gets that big glob kind of off the end there. And then what we say is to swirl, okay? And this is pretty much the most important step. The less paint that's on your brush, the less likely you are to bleed underneath. Okay, so you're looking for this right here. Then you're gonna go to your board. And the way I like to do it is I like to swirl again. I just like to keep the motion that way. For me, that's more comfortable. Some people do prefer the stippling, but what I find sometimes is that, that can also create some bleeding just because you are creating such a emotion that way with your paint, you can bleed underneath. So I really prefer the swirling motion. I think it's a little bit more true, right? Then when I go to reload my paint, a nice little painter's trick is use this blob right here. Use that nice paint, paint you already picked up and that'll prevent you from picking up too much paint every time, right? And then we're going to swirl, swirl, swirl. Again, looking for this dusty color right here. Now, stenciling is a layers game. So what you're going to see is after one to two layers, you're finally going to be able to see what you're, what you're doing. I've done just one coat on the ME and two on the ELCO. Can you see that? But even still, just that little bit of paint on the ME is still visible once the stencil is removed. And since this stencil is not too large, I don't have to worry about keeping my or moving my tape along my words. There you go. I think I can do one more coat on this, but I do want to let it dry before I go back and do that. So now that my stencil's been dried, I'm going to come back to it again. Um, we, we dry them in between coats just to be sure we don't have too many brush marks. If you want to prevent that kind of look, just dry in between every layer, okay? The advantage to using a Studio R12 stencil is that it is laser cut and therefore it is durable. And you're not going to have, if you were to use like a vinyl or a decal, any of those frilly edges as long as you use the proper stenciling techniques. One thing the stippling is really good for is if you've got a little spot that doesn't seem to be covering, like right here, I seem to not be sticking paint, that's a good time to use stippling. You can just kind of patch in just a little bit, still barely any paint on your brush. Now my W matches much better. I'm gonna go over this just one more time along the edges to be sure I've got nice crisp letters. 
staying away from that W since it's still a little wet. Okay. And as soon as you're done, you can just go ahead and peel your stencil right off. You have a finished product. Now I'm going to talk to you about this clock project. Using our unique Studio R12 stencils, you'll be able to create a clock with even spacing between your numbers and nice, crisp stenciling. If you love this crisp look, you're welcome to stop and seal here. But if you need something more distressed to match your decor, I'm going to show you how to do that today. Now I'm going to show you how to get into the distressing of your project. The first thing you're going to need is some sandpaper. I like to put mine on one of these sanding blocks, that way I have a good grip in my hand. You're going to want to use more of a heavy grit sanding, that way you can get nice and deep into your, your paint there, so you can get back to that natural wood if you want. What we're going to do is take our sander and go with the grain that you painted, that way it looks really natural to the eye, right, not distracting. So you're going to sand really lightly at first. And I'll kind of show you the difference just from one half to the other of now how my letters don't look so crispy but more like they belong on my clock, right? If you want to go a little deeper and give it more of a distress, you're going to take your sander here and you're going to press in just a little bit more. The heavy press is going to take it back down all the way or almost all the way to that natural wood color. When I'm doing distressing like this, I like to look at my board and kind of, kind of start it from the edges. And you're going to create those big gouges that I've created here along the bottom to start. And then you're going to go over them lightly to blend them back in. So this is going to be more of a distressed versus that crispy clean one more time. And then if you want to get the darker look around these, you're just going to use like a dark sealer or a darker stain kind of over it, wiped over, and that's going to create more of a warm tone and get this wood back to a dark color. And just remember, you can get either this beautiful distressed look or this wonderful crisp look using our unique Studio R12 clock stencils. Now I'm going to teach you how to layer your stencils. So what I've used here is the Studio R12 Buffalo Check print with our Merry and Bright with the reindeer over top. All you're going to do for this process is get your Buffalo Check stencil. And as you can see, like we discussed previously, the stencil is much larger than the wood surface. So I've went ahead and just taped across things I've already painted. And then I'm just going to do that stenciling process again right here, finishing up the buffalo check. So I'm going to take my black paint. And again, just being sure I'm using good portion control with my painting, right? Getting only a little bit. Taking my dome brush, that's really important. Just a little bit. I get the paint off, being sure that we're taking a nearly dry brush to the board. Now, if you wanted more of a crisp look, you could do more than one layer of the buffalo check. Um, for this one, I really liked kind of the faded. I liked that it looked a little antique. So I only did one layer of the black, opposed to maybe a, a second or third coat on top. So the way you kind of just line this one up is you just lay it on so that it's squared to your board, or you can even turn them diagonal if you like kind of the diagonal look for the buffalo. Patterned backgrounds are a really good way to set your project apart um, from just the standard stencil with a solid background. As soon as you're done with that stencil, you'll just go ahead and remove it. If you use that dry brushing technique I showed you, it'll be good and dry ready to go on to the next thing, and mine is. So I'm going to go ahead and take my Merry and Bright stencil, and I'm just going to lay it down. Now this one is sized to the board that I'm using, so I don't have to worry so much about lining. Then you're going to take your tape. We use, I use painter's tape, because um, I think that's best. It doesn't peel your paint if you are having to overlap or anything like that, so it's just a good thing to have on hand. Then let's go on with an, uh, like a cream color. I think that's going to look really nice on this buffalo check here, if you can see there. 
Again, just being cautious with how much paint I'm kind of taking out. And I'm just going to paint, I think, one little layer for you to see. We're, again, we're using that dry brushing technique. Um, when I do this, you know, finish the project all the way out, you are going to have to do more coats. So two to three coats is going to get you this look right here. Now I'm going to show you how to add embellishments. To get a look like this, you're going to take a snowflake pattern stencil and a project that's completed to this stage right here. And then you're going to use some different pressure techniques. So one thing I really like to do just from a design aspect is be sure I'm anchoring my corners. So I usually take my snowflake stencil and I find ones that I like the best. I'm really loving this big one right here. So again, with the, the stenciling technique, just a little bit of paint. We're wiping off really, really well. Being sure minimal paint here is the key. I'm going to go here, and I'm just going to barely press on my brush, kind of dust over the whole thing. As you can see, I also did not put the entire snowflake on the board. There is some of it that's kind of off. And so if you look here, you can kind of see where I, I pressed harder, so like here in the middle and here on this edge and where I really went really nice and gentle. I also picked up a little corner of a snowflake. That's no big deal to me, I kind of like it. I think it adds some more depth, but if you were really concerned about it, you could just take some water and just wipe it right off. And just dust them in. I'm not even gonna add any more paint to my brush right now, because I don't want these snowflakes to be very noticeable. I kind of just want them to be sweet and light, and it's okay too if you want them to overlap just a little bit. Maybe you want one of them really dark again. There it goes, just like that one. And I think I need one down here. And with this kind of process, it's all just about having a creative eye just looking for what you think looks really good and what you like on your project. And then you'll just keep filling in along your edges, all four of them, and in your corners until you have exactly how you like it. Um, and again, when you're done with that, uh, I frequently sand. That way it's gonna blend them in nicely. So you can kind of get finished product look right there. The other thing that this project here has that's really beautiful is the spattering. It's one of my favorite techniques. You can go ahead and take any of your leftover white paint and you're just going to add a little bit of water. So you're going to take your rake brush and you're going to just dip it in to this watery paint mixture that you've made. Always tap off on whatever you're using to, um, on whatever you're using to hold your paint. That way you can see kind of how big your, your flakes are that you're doing, your spattering is. Then you're going to go here, and there's a variety of ways you can kind of tap. Um, right now, I want to do what we call making it snow on this board. So I'm kind of just doing big, far away from my board kind of thing, and it's giving me this nice effect all over. Now, I want to look like my tree here has gotten some extra snow on it. So I'm going to take my big brush, and I'm going to anchor it on my board, and I'm going to hit really gently right over the tree. And that's going to kind of control the spatter so it's more centralized where I want it. There you go. So that's how you spatter. And then to finish this project, all I did to get these bulbs on my tree was took the end of my brush, and you can just dot whatever colors you're thinking. Next, I'll be taking you into how to do the drop shadowing technique, which is the gray you see layered underneath the stenciled lettering. So my process for this was I went ahead and I did the background for my project. I laid down my stencil, which as I mentioned before, these are incredibly durable and reusable. So I don't know if you can tell, 
but this paint, this stencil has a little bit of paint left on it. This morning when I got it out, it was absolutely caked. So I just soaked it in some warm water with some dish soap and it came almost completely clean, ready to be used again. So I just did a light coat on the lettering so that I have a marker to see where to move my stencil. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab the corners and I move down just a little. And then I typically go to the right you can go to the left also. It's just wherever you want your light to be coming from, right? So I like mine coming from this direction. And then you're just gonna tape it down. So now that I've got my stencil lined up and pulled down and to the right, just a hair, now I'm gonna get some paint. Again, just remembering how much I'm gonna use, I'm only gonna get out a dot. Taking my half inch dome brush here. I'm gonna just clean it off so that I don't have too much paint. And I'm just gonna paint right over the words I already painted. And doing that, it's gonna paint everything that was the background color. We'll also paint the letter, but it will paint the background color so that you get this nice gray coming along. So keeping in mind paint contrast, I originally chose a much lighter gray and then I decided that that wasn't gonna look the best. I feel like that was just a little too light. So I went ahead and grabbed something a little darker. Um, and paint's really cool, it just layers over top. So you're just gonna change. I, I do recommend if you have a lighter background, go for a darker paint, right? So again, just that stenciling process. Sure, I'm wiping all my paint off. To get that nice dusty color. Sometimes if you have a dark enough color and contrast your background, you can get away with doing the drop shadowing only one coat. Um, I still typically do two. I just really like how true it looks. Um, but sometimes if it's, if it's a high enough contrast, you can just do one coat. Because I want all of the words drop shadowed in the same color, I don't have to think a whole lot about this process. We're just gonna paint all of my lettering. I don't have to worry about any close spots or anything like that, changing brushes there. Um, just being careful not to paint my, my leaves, even though I painted that one. So I'm gonna show you just how to take care of that problem. As soon as you notice it, just grab a little bit of water. And you're just gonna kinda wipe it away. It's no big deal. And this brush, I've been using it for a really long time now. Um, and for a small brush like this, they, they just hold the paint. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kinda squeeze that excess paint out so I don't have to deal with bleeding on such a beautiful project. I'm just gonna go along here. And even still, look how much just that little bit of paint on my brush, there can't be very much at all. Um, look how much that's doing there. That's amazing. Just with all the paint that these brushes trap, look how much I was able to do before I even needed to reload my brush. That's where a lot of people um, make mistakes with stenciling is they just have too much on their brush. Or I think a lot of people, even when I first started painting, I thought it was a one coat and done kind of process. I really thought that you should just paint the stencil one time and then you should be done with it. Um, as I've grown as an artist, I've learned that paint stenciling is a process. It's a layers game, all about adding over top, over and over and over. That's why I really like things like the drop shadowing and those um, stencil layered backgrounds, things like that, they really show the versatility and they show the process of stenciling as well. Just the layers and all of that, I think it speaks really well to the kind of tool that a stencil is for an artist. Okay, so now my drop shadowing should look good. Yeah, looks great. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna peel it. I'm just gonna wipe off any of these little bristle hairs that the brushes can leave behind. And then I'm gonna move it back to where it went. I have a hard time looking at my lettering to do that, so that's why it's really good to have something that's kind of stable. So I'm gonna just line it up using the wreath. I'm just gonna tape this back down. 
And then I'm going to get the colors that I want it to be in the finished product. Picking up just a little bit of paint there. Working it off while still coating my brush thoroughly. I'm just going to come up here and I'm going to paint. And this is my favorite part. Look how much coverage you get immediately. Um, it just builds really nicely. Swirl, swirl, swirl. There we go. Again, did you notice how I didn't have to pick up paint between the A and the T, but I did between the G and the R? It's again because these brushes that you use, they hold paint. That's why a lot of people notice that um, the further along they get in a word, that's where the bleeding is the heaviest. It's because the longer you use your brush, the more paint that's trapped inside of it, which can be good if you're being careful because it helps you kind of be quick, but if you don't know to take all of that paint off your brush, it could be kind of detrimental to your project. Okay, so let's take a little peek at Grateful. Yeah, and so look how nice that is. I did this one really thin, because I just love a thin drop shadow. I just like for it to be really light, but that looks great. So I'm gonna move on and go ahead and do Blessed, just because they're in the same color, so I like to do those at the same time. With the techniques you learned today, you can paint projects just like these. Thank you for joining me today for Studio R12's Creative Moment.